how did this did it start with you um, how did it start with your spiritual interests oh so I always was interested in spirituality my whole life which is interesting to just I don't want to cut you but yeah. I think it's interesting because you said before that you are you grew up with you were like a math genius yeah so uh, that's pretty uncommon that people were interested in more logical yeah. things are also I have the same thing I'm not the logical person more languages yeah uh, I'm logical but not I mean the mathematical um, no it's very interesting because when I look up things about so this is a bit before I start talking about my past I'll just mention that when I look up things that define how people should be I never fit properly Like a good example is when I was in high school, they would give me these tests to see what kind of career I should have. And they would say, well, based on your abilities, you should do something like engineering or math. But based on your interest, it's saying to do something creative like art. And then they're like, well, but you shouldn't do art because you will never make any money. So just do the more logical stuff but the reality is you can do both but I don't think people can have ever thought of it that way but so when I was young I remember very clearly that I would want to go to church my family would be like you know well okay we'll take you and then so I had been to church a few times and they're talking about all this crazy shit And because I'm like seven years old, eight years old, I just assume if an adult's telling you this, that it's true. And so when I would go to church, they would sit all the kids in the front row, and then the priest would sometimes ask questions to the kids. And I was always like, well, I know. And I would have an answer. Or I would look at the priest and I would just be like, I gotta talk to this guy. He knows all the shit I need to know. So after church, I would always go over and have these crazy questions for him, like you did, like who invented, who created God? If God exists, who created God? Like I would have questions like that and think, I can't wait till Sunday so I can talk to the priest and, you know, get this shit sorted out because I got some questions. And then because I was a nerd when I was a kid, I had a rock collection. I was really into collecting crystals and rocks and different things like that. I had no idea that there was this side of spirituality where people think these things have powers. But when I was 12, I was in Florida and I saw this store that was selling all these crystals. So I thought, oh, perfect. I'll go in there and buy myself a cool rock for my rock collection. And when I was in there, this hippie lady came up to me and she's like, oh yeah, that's this one has this power. This one you can use for love. This one attracts money. And I was like, what? What the fuck are you talking about? And, uh... Yeah, look at this place. It's closed, I think. No, it's not. I think it's anymore. It just it sells crystals. Yeah, it sells glass. Yeah. So, uh... In my mind, again, I'm a kid, and an adult is telling me that crystals have powers. So I bought this book called Crystal... Crystal has powers. What's that? Yeah, Crystal Meth has power. No, crystals have power. So I bought this book called Crystal Magic. And actually, let me back up. I just remembered. Before that, there's these books in Canada. And in, they were made by Time Life. And they were about paranormal stuff. I forget the name, but they're very common. It was almost like encyclopedias. Like one would be about astral projection. One would be about witches. They all had this whole collection and they had them in the library and I used to go there I was always reading books about like Bigfoot or UFOs and just one thing yeah. for it, uh, um, because of the crystals it's yeah. interesting because one of my first books was also about crystals and I just remember something that I forgot like on my 12th birthday mm -hmm. we had this complete sundown like sun, sun, a sun eclipse in yeah. Germany you know and uh, it was directly at my 12th birthday and we were in a um, in a torture museum like in a, in a in an old castle in Austria yeah and in the moment I came out that was when the sundown was and I remember I had this book about crystals in my hand no when way I, when, I, when I came out this was 
one of my first like books yeah about this. so the first that's crazy there's something about that age where I think you just can't come online more you're just like awake so at around 12 I got this book on crystal magic and then I bought the book the Necronomicon from just a regular bookstore. I remember I'd always look up the different spiritual books and I was very like almost afraid to buy this book. And then I bought it and then I went crazy with it. So I convinced two of my friends, my other, they're probably 11 years old, to go to the cemetery with me to raise some kind of demon. And then I went to a Catholic school and I remember there was this weird thing. Maybe it was our kid minds, but we thought there were Satan worshippers coming to the school because A, someone found a swan on the school property and its neck had been tied in a knot. And then also I found a snake which had been tied into two knots that was dead. And it was left on the doorstep of the school. And there was these weird biker people who lived next to the school. So I got it in my head that the bikers were attacking the school, like some spiritual <laughs> warfare. And so we went up onto the roof of the school and I did a protection spell. This was probably the first time that I did something and had a really significant result. So the book said to take a string and tie 10 knots in it and then read a line from this spell, which was in a made up or foreign language. And when you read the, the line, you would untie one of the knots. And then when you were done, you took the string and threw it in a fire. And I remember we had this little fire going on top of the school. And then when I threw the string in, the fire really rose in a big way. Like it didn't make sense. The So I was doing this protection spell to protect my school from Satanists. This all made sense to my 12 year old brain. And when I did this ritual and threw the string in the fire, the fire went from small to really big in a very short period of time. And uh, it kind of made me feel like that the ritual worked, but it also really scared me. I was like, kind of just playing around with this stuff, almost like Dungeons and Dragons. I didn't really think that it was real. And then in that moment, I felt very much like there was something potentially there. And uh, I also bought some books back then on Wicca because those were the only things available in the bookstore. But uh, in high school, I kind of got more interested in smoking weed and other shit than doing this kind of stuff so I, I did move away from it for a while and then I would often read books on Buddhism or Hinduism or other things like that and then eventually I started gravitating towards uh, the occult again because I would read things and, and think there's obviously more so specifically what happened was I have a friend and he was walking down the beach in Florida and all of a sudden the left half of his body just stopped working. He couldn't walk, couldn't move his arm and they had rushed him to the hospital and he had a brain tumor and they told him you're going to die. There's no way we can remove this. You've got maybe two months. You're dead. Sorry about your luck. And he had kids and he also had a, a wife who was very respected in, in the native or indigenous community in Canada. She had a PhD and she was very uh, like educated. And she took him to a native spirit healer and he used an eagle's bone and sucked the tumor out of his brain. And uh, he lived. He went back, you know, they did this ritual two or three times, and then he went to the hospital and the doctors are like, yeah, your tumor's gone. We don't understand it, but it's completely gone. And he's still alive now, and it's like 15 years later. And so when he was telling me that story, I remembered that there is something more to 
to life than what we understand with our the kind of like culture that we live in is very much against this stuff and it made me realize there is something more and I want to figure out what it is and once then, you experience spirits like that? really once you experience spirits you know there yeah. is also no way you cannot believe and especially if really extreme things happen to you like not just apparitions or something I'm talking about like healing like yeah and, and you can see and it really it per changes of perception that spirits are responsible for like you know and, and they are like or even magical operations mm -hmm. it's impossible to not see that so it's it's hard when people are atheists or something and they don't believe in that at all but the only thing they need to do is just witness it one time and then they know it's like impossible not to know when they witness no matter how logical you are you know I uh, yeah but I it's good they don't agree. because just one thing sorry uh, think about if magical operations and things like that were proven true there would be punishments for it you yeah know? so I am pretty happy uh, fucking radar I'm pretty happy as it is now that actually we are free to do however we like uh, yeah to, to I think it's a perfect time for because for most most people, if you start talking about occult stuff, they just think you're so weird that they just tune off. Don't tell them. Turn off. Well, I mean, I don't go up to strangers and talk yeah, about exactly. it, but that's, I mean, I mean. that's the, yeah. the general idea. But, so at that moment, I got more deeply into this stuff, and uh, once I dove in, I just went fully in, and that was it. In what specifically? What well, basically... I had this belief for a while that Crowley was evil. I think a lot of people say stuff like this. That's the general pulp cult, pop culture view of him. So I was wanting to read his stuff, but I thought, nah, like maybe. But then I finally, you know, did some more. Who was evil? Alistair Crowley. Uh, okay. So that's the general pop culture, as well as in the Wiccan community, a lot of spiritual communities, you bring him up and they're like, no, he's so bad. So I had this hesitancy to look into it, but I eventually went and looked into it more online. And then I joined the OTO and as well as the, the temple that I belong to, which was the temple of the Lady of, of the Silver Star. And, you know, it, it was a hermetic teaching school. And the end goal of it is to basically prepare you to join the AA of, uh, that Alistair Crowley started. So I joined that and uh, I joined the temple and it took me about five years to get to the grade that I needed to be in to join the AA. And then I was initiated into the AA. It was very hard to get into. I don't think a lot of people are belong to it. But I have. So my teacher was taught. David Shoemaker was taught by Phyllis Seckler, who's a very well-known occultist from California. And then Phyllis Seckler was initiated by Jane Wolfe, who was a an early film star like in the 1950s and then Jane Wolf was initiated by Aleister Crowley so I have all the paperwork showing that there's a direct lineage from my initiation to Crowley and I'm not a huge uh, Aleister Crowley is some sort of uh, yeah I th think it's on the other side yeah let me just so. check Yeah, just for, I think the problem, there's a lot of problems with Thelema, a lot that keep me away from it. I don't go to events for Thelemic stuff, I don't really hang out with 
many Thelemic people. I have a core group of friends that are really good. Uh, my teacher, Edward Mason, was great. Um, but I think it just it, it attracts a certain type of people that are, yeah, they're more interested in, in wor almost like worshiping Aleister Crowley. Like they just want to talk about him and talk about all his beliefs. And he had some ideas about political systems. He had ideas about a lot of things that don't really have to do with occultism very much. And so I just, I find hanging out with these kind of people very tiring. And I just want to hang out with people who are actually doing the work. And the reason that I like him presently as a source of information is he just did the most work. You look at any occultist that's ever lived and he wrote the most books. Anything that was of interest as being useful, he did the whole system, explored the whole thing, got a really good understanding of it, and then wrote his perspective of it. And he also wrote it in a way where it's very limited for people to understand, so it's not easily accessible, which I think is also good, instead of just picking up a book and it says, here's what you do. You need a teacher. Yeah, you need a teacher, and uh, I also think that's really good. I think being in the temple that I belong to was the best thing I could have done. We would meet twice a month. One day we would do a rehearsal of the ritual that we would perform together and then the other day that when we met we would perform the ritual and I had really nice very beautiful moments during those times and uh, yeah I mean I don't really want to give advice to anyone I think everyone there's like that saying you know there's many paths to the top of the mountain where you just need to choose one when I, I spent some time with a Tibetan monk and he was a uh, Rinpoche and I kind of asked him about this and his thing was that it doesn't matter which spiritual system you pick you just need to pick one and then you need to stick to it and he said in the West people are always trying to find the best, fastest way to get somewhere and then they're always changing their mind. So they'll be into, oh, I'm super into tantric yoga. They do that for six months and then they're thinking, no, I actually want to study Hinduism. Then they're like, no, I'm going to study Rudolf Steiner. No, I'm going to get into Wicca. No, like they're constantly switching. And he used the example of like if you're trying to get somewhere and then you think it doesn't matter if you go by plane, if you drive, ride your bike, take a train, it doesn't matter, you'll eventually get there. But if you decide, hey, I'm going to take a plane and then you've been on the plane for an hour and you go, you know what, this is a bad idea, I want to get off the plane, I'm going to take a train. Then you're on the train for a little bit and you think, you know what, this is a bad idea, I'm going to take a bike. Like, eventually, you're just never going to get there, right? So just pick something and stick to it. It's the thing.